If you want to see this documentary uncut and ad free, check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality, where you can check out all my documentaries uncut, raw, and ad free. The link is in the description below. Also, support us on the Diverse Mentality podcast, daily hip hop news, debates, and even artist interviews. Check the link in the description below for that. And leave a like on this video, it really goes a long way. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. So where does he stand as far as Junior is concerned right Across now? Across the street or around the corner. He's not in my camp. Not at all? No way. Garbage, y'all. Uh, 50 in magazines just shitting on me every chance they get. Me and Dre met him before in the road. At the four in the road, he went left, I went right, and he went back up. Left for dead on the doctor's advocate. Dre never executive produced it. I just imagined it. As you know, I'm your host, The Game. Welcome back to Sucker Free Sunday on MTV2. My debut album is in stores now. It's called The Documentary, for those who don't know. And I'm about to show you why I gave it that title. Let you know where I'm coming from and what I'm trying to say. Take a look, and I'll see you on the other side. It's The Game. It's January 25th, 2005. You've just released your debut album and sold 586,000 copies the first week and arguably resurrected a whole West Coast. You received a co-sign from one of the best producers of all time and got put into one of the hottest hip-hop groups. At this moment, you're on top of the world. Your album debuted at number one with a bullet, and there's nothing anyone can tell you. Seemingly, at this moment in your career, everything is going right, but just in a couple months, everything goes left. You get into it with your own boss who is your label mate who helped you put your album out. This then causes a rift between your mentor who signed you in the first place. You get kicked out of the hottest hip hop group at that time. You get dropped and moved to a sister label with less funding and now you're left on your own. The two people who helped executive produce your debut album are no longer there to help you and you have to overcome a sophomore jinx. What do you do? Most artists would have folded. You would have never heard a sophomore album, but most artists aren't the game. With that being said, welcome to the making of The Doctor's Advocate. I'm supposed to enjoy but it's quite clear. The last 12 months been a nightmare. After the major success of the game's debut album, The Documentary, the game decided to go overseas and tour with Snoop Dogg. While in Amsterdam, he decided to go at Jay-Z. But before he did that, he ended up asking 50 Cent if he could go at Jay-Z. 50 Cent said, don't do it, it's not a good idea. But despite that, he did it anyway. If you want to know more about the game versus Jay-Z, watch my video, Game versus Jay-Z, What Really Happened. The link is in the description below. After coming off that Amsterdam tour, the game decided to do more interviews. And as he did interviews, he started to slowly distance himself from 50 Cent and G-Unit by stating he has no problems with anyone that 50 Cent has issues with. And 50 Cent initially was confused by this. He felt the game was a loose cannon and wouldn't advise anyone about anything that he was doing. Of course, this caused tension between the two. And on February 28th, 2005, the game's career would forever change. 50 Cent appeared on Ed Lover's show on Power 105 and got asked if the game is still in G-Unit. 50 Cent responded, he's no longer in the group. And at this moment, the game's career path forever changed as he would no longer have ties with Aftermath and G-Unit. Ironically, the game was in New York at that time when 50 Cent said that. He appeared on Angie Martinez's show, a fan called in and revealed that 50 Cent had kicked him out the group. And initially, the game's response was a confused one, but he ultimately said that he is just going to focus on himself and make great music. That same day, later that night, 50 Cent appeared on Funk Flex's show and reiterated that the game is no longer in G-Unit. 
This is when the gang would show up that night and there would be a shootout between 50 Cent and the game. And if you want to know more about 50 Cent versus the game, check out my video, 50 versus the game, who really won? A link is in the description below. With the game having issues with his own boss, 50 Cent, it would leave him in a very precarious situation. He had just got done signing a five album deal with Aftermath slash G Unit Records, and he had only delivered one of those five albums. So rightfully so, the question in the air was, how is the game going to move forward from this situation? Ultimately, the game took a page from 50 Cent's book and decided to go at 50 Cent in order to remain relevant throughout the time before he would figure out when his next album would come out. After 50 Cent and the game had their issues during the Hot 97 shootout on February 28, 2005, roughly a couple days later, the game flew back out to LA to talk with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine to see if they can resolve the issues between him and 50 Cent. Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre came up with the idea for 50 Cent and the game to hold a press conference in New York City. Not only would they be seen together there, but they would also donate to charities there. And this would be on March 9th, 2005, which was on the anniversary of Biggie's death. They had the press conference, decided to talk, and then after that, questions still rose is the game on G Unit after this, or is he officially out still? 50 and Game initially kept a respectable distance from each other on stage, appearing at times uncomfortable until the very end when they gave each other a symbolic pound to show they were at a truce. Well, there you have it. But still, there's some questions left unanswered, like is the game officially still in G Unit? We'll let you know how that pans out. But in the meantime, on the anniversary of Notorious B.I.G.'s death, it's good to see young African-American males take accountability for their actions and redirect their energy in a positive direction. We can all learn from that. People thought that the beef was officially squashed here and the two could move forward. But as the years would go on, they would not be seen together ever again in the same location. The game embarked on his own tour titled How the West Was Won. And on this tour, while promoting his documentary album, he would take slight shots at G-Unit. 50 Cent and G-Unit would go on radio shows while 50 was promoting his Massacre album and take shots right back at him. Then on June 5th, 2005, the game was headlining Hot 97's Summer Jam in New York. With New York being 50 Cent's terror the game made it clear where he stands with him and G Unit. While he was on stage for the first time, he yelled out G U Not and threw his former G Unit chain in the crowd while wearing his new Black Wall Street chain. He brought out a rat which he said resembled 50 Cent. They beat up the rat on stage and the game was having a field day. I ain't asked for the shit, I got kicked out the group. Cause the nigga hated on me, man. So it's just a G G U Not. I don't fuck with rats and snitches. Niggas kick me out the group. So niggas can suck my shit. I'm from the West Coast and I got love for New York. Play, play. That's what I'm here. Who got, who got my chain? My own chain. I'm not affiliated, so y'all can have some shit on the back, man. Yeah, you know me, Mr. Thor's chain in the crowd. Give me, give me the G in the chain. So you can see it's all bent. After this moment, it was clear that 50 Cent and the game did not end their beef 
and it was just getting started. The public, however, was still in the dark about the game's relationship with Dr. Dre. The game would get asked as the weeks went on, is he still close to Dr. Dre? Is he still on Aftermath? The game would say him and Dr. Dre are cool and they are actually working in the studio on his next album. Despite him saying that, he was still in a weird space because as he would perform, he would end up performing songs that him and 50 Cent had as hits on his album, which would prompt people to say without 50 Cent and Dr. Dre, the game wouldn't be anywhere in his career. 50 Cent was also doing interviews stating that he wrote most of the game's album. And with people repeating that and constantly claiming that game couldn't do anything on his own, the game felt like his back was against the wall and he had to prove something to the world. So what he did was take a page out of 50 Cent's book. So what 50 Cent did to Ja Rule in the beef and going constantly at him trying to destroy him, the same thing the game decided to do to 50 Cent. So on June 19th, 2005, the game released his new mixtape, You Know What It Is, Volume 3. And on this mixtape, he had a barrage of songs going at 50 Cent and G-Unit. And the most notable song was 300 Bars and Run. And it didn't stop there. 50 Cent didn't really pay attention to what the game was doing. Most of his G-Unit members were attacking the game, but the game didn't care. He kept going at 50 and G-Unit. And in September 7, 2005, the game released his new mixtape, Ghost Unit. And what caught people's attention on this mixtape was on track number two, titled Here We Go Again, there was a feature from Dr. Dre. So of course, this started sparking the conversation that Game and Dr. Dre were back in the studio working together despite the issues between him and 50. Then on November 12th, 2005, the game appeared at the Vibe Awards. And while there, he got asked questions about his upcoming album and if he's still working with Dr. Dre. The game at that moment officially revealed the album title for his sophomore album. He said, it's called The Doctor's Advocate. Then they asked him, what is the meaning behind that title? He said, it means Dr. Dre's the man. What he says goes. He's got the formula and we're gonna make it happen. Understand that you got to understand the definition of the title. The title is called the Doctor's Advocate because, first of all, we'll cut it in half, man, and just say, you know, the doctor. For you know, for instance, I studied under Dre for the last five years, man. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of praise that goes to that man for, you know, t I, I was fresh out the coma maybe four months and I had to deal with Dr. Dre. So. Dr. Dre is sort of, you know, responsible, you know what I'm saying, not even sort of, he is responsible for my existence in hip-hop and I'll forever praise that man, you know, first and foremost for what he did and me being a fan of him and N.W.A. and his chronic albums with Snoop and Eminem and all, even 50 Cent in, his early, in the early stages, all those guys, so I always pay homage to the doc. And then when I became a pupil, man, and, and, and you know, one of, one of the Pac, Snoop, Eminem and 50 Cent, you know what I'm saying, and myself, Dre gave, you know, Dre created that and gave me everything that I now have, I feel like, in a sense. So to me, Dre is a hip-hop god and saved my life. So, you know, that's where paying homage to the doctor goes in the title. Now, the second half of that would be, you know, the act of advocating. And if you look up advocate in the dictionary, it's going to tell you to speak on behalf of something, someone, or someplace. And you know what I'm saying? So I'm avid, on this album, I'm advocating for the doctor. All the things that you wanted to hear Dr. Dre say the last five to seven years because he puts out albums not so often. All the things that you, you want to hear from the West Coast that you can't get because, you know, the other MCs are not, you know what I'm saying, as lyrically, you know, committed as I am. All of the things that you want to know about Compton that I didn't tell you on the first album I'm gonna advocate to you and every other person that listens to my music when the album drops and so there you got the title doctor's advocate and the game revealed that he's already been in the studio with Dre and said the beef between him and 50 does not affect him and his relationship with Dr. Dre he said Dr. Dre makes good music Eminem 50 Cent myself we all sell records we're all protégés of Dr. Dre so me and 50's beef stays outside and we don't bring it in the house and while he was answering these questions he had Giu not shaved into his hair so they asked him are you still focused on 50 and he said he's looked past them they asked him then who is producing on the album besides Dr. Dre he revealed Kanye West just Blaze Timbaland Scott Storch and Cool and Dre he said same soup different kitchen and then made the bold statement that we're gonna get it done we're gonna sell a million copies the first week and with a statement like that it shows the game's confidence was at an all-time high to prove to the world that he didn't need 50 cent to have a successful second album 
The game, however, did not back off on 50 Cent, and a couple weeks later, he decided to release the new mixtape and DVD going at 50 on December 3rd, 2005, titled Stop Snitching, Stop Lying. And in the DVD, he was going all over America looking for 50 Cent, clowning him in G-Unit. He even made fun of 50 for his movie, not outselling the Chicken Little movie that came out the same week. And the cover itself is a parody of 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying movie. As 2006 started rolling around, the game consistently said that him and Dre were still working. But behind the scenes, things started to change. As 50 Cent didn't like the fact that Dr. Dre was still working with the game and that Jimmy Iovine still had the game on Interscope Records. From 50 Cent's point of view, Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre were funding the game who was anti-50 Cent. And to have him on the same label was a conflict of interest. Speaking of legal documents and paperwork, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and communicate with your legal team all from your phone. When you're in an accident, one of the first and easiest things to do is get in touch with Morgan & Morgan. It takes only eight clicks or less to submit a claim and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. With Morgan & Morgan being America's largest injury law firm, they have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers with over 15 billion dollars recovered for clients morgan and morgan has proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation submitting an injury claim with morgan and morgan is so easy it's more like using an app than hiring a lawyer with morgan and morgan you can submit a claim without ever having to leave your couch in eight clicks or less you can submit a claim. And thankfully, as the years went on, technology have made things a lot more seamless and easy. I wish my parents would have had this in the early 2000s when they got into a car accident because they had a lot of issues of how to even get in contact with the lawyer because they barely spoke English. This would have came in clutch at that time if it was available. Luckily, the person never drove off or did any harm. That person actually stayed there figured everything out, and they didn't have to hire a lawyer. Thankfully, it ended up good, but at that time, Morgan & Morgan would have been an easy, easy route to get a lawyer, very seamless. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. It's so easy. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash diverse or dial pound law. That's pound law. 529 from your cell phone. The link is in the description below for the people.com forward slash diverse. Check it out and let's continue the video. So ultimately, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine sided with 50 Cent because at that time he was the money maker. So as 2006 rolled around, the game still said he was working with Dr. Dre and said that his album is slated to come out in early 2006, sometime around April. <laughs> Me and Dre met at the fork in the road. At the fork in the road, he went left, I went right, and we met back up uh, somehow at the end. And, uh, you know, five million records later, uh, three number one singles, and, you know, a host of awards. And, you know, and what the difference 12, 12 months made. And I came back, and so now it's back in uh, working with Dr. Dre for my early, I mean, for my late March release. And of course, that did not end up happening because of the behind the scenes conflict that 50 Cent was having with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. So his second album ended up getting pushed back. And because of conflicting issues behind the scenes with the record labels, Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre, 50 and Game, the game ended up not using any of the Dr. Dre tracks that were produced for his second album. But for me, he wasn't there and I didn't really understand why not until, you know, like recently. And he was just, me and Dre had a conversation and he was just like, you had everything figured out. Wow. Nobody couldn't tell you shit. So to sit you down or to push you in this direction, it wasn't gonna work. So I didn't have right. the time to waste for you. He couldn't A&R develop the way he was doing He couldn't do it. Artists. He was like, I told you not to do a mixtape before your album, you did it. You I did told you not to beef with 50, you still did it. Mm -hmm. He was like, I just sat back. I knew you would, you know, probably come out okay, but mm -hmm. there was a, you know, a small percent that you might not make it out at all. And I didn't want to, be, I didn't want to have my hand in that. So that's why he stepped back. And I didn't know until a conversation I had with him recently. So. And so I put those songs on the internet myself, the ones that Dre did, because mm -hmm. I didn't want him to have any involvement in the album. I was pissed off at him mm -hmm. for uh, ch what I, doing what I felt like was choosing 50 side. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I mean, financially, 
uh, Interscope Aftermath as a structure, I would have done what Dre did. I mean, 50 was making, mm -hmm. he was the bulk of the money. And also as a business, like, I mean, he, he was contracted to, you know, right. Jimmy Iovine and Interscope as well. So he mm -hmm. couldn't jump out the window mm -hmm. uh, for his little homie he considered a talented artist that he signed. And now I understand that, but I didn't then. So I didn't want Dre to have anything um, to do with my album. And without Dr. Dre being there, once again, the game felt like his back was against the wall and he was left for dead. And the best approach the game decided to take was an approach of him against the world. And he decided to fly out to New York to re-record his second album and start from scratch. He said he went to New York because it's the polar opposite of Los Angeles, where he's from, and he wanted to get away from his home environment and lock himself in the studio until he came out with his second album. My dumb ass was in New York, middle of the beef with 50, mm -hmm. and the bottom of, um, and the bottom of uh, Sony, Recording the Doctor's Advocate, Busta, mm -hmm. Nas, like I was there. And he also said that Interscope did not fund him at all for this album. He had to do a lot of the features and production off of favors until Interscope later on would pay him after the album's release. The first track that the game recorded for Doctor's Advocate is the last track on the album, which is track 16 titled Why You Hate the Game featuring Nas. Game said that he met Nas after the documentary got released and Nas gave him his phone number and said, if you ever need a favor, let me know and call me. And that's exactly what the game did. He called Nas in, they locked in in the studio and came out with that track. The first track I recorded for this album was a song that um, featured Nas and it's called Why You Hate The Game. And um, you know, the concept to the song is in the title. It's featuring my homeboy Nas, Illmatic, the God MC, Nasty Nas. Um, his flow is timeless on here, man. And uh, Marsha from Flowetry, you know, she was on the first album, Start From Scratch. Love her voice, love what she do, real soulful. You know, remind me of, you know, something angelic when she, when she sings, man. So I had to get on this album. It's a Just Blaze track. You know, she comes in on the hook, sings so beautiful, man, that um, that's all I needed as far as inspiration to write my verses. You know, yesterday during the listening party, I was, um, I got caught in the moment, and um, that song falls in the same place on this album as Like Father, Like Son did last album. It's one of those songs that make me think about the birth of my son, you know what I'm saying, the death of my brother, the death of my grandmother, um, you know, my best friend dying right before the last album dropped, all of the homies that I lost, all of the people that died in 9-11, all of the people that lost their homes in Hurricane Katrina. It's just one of those tracks, man, that, um, you know, it's like an onion to hip hop, man. It makes the real cry. And while recording the second album in the summer, the game would learn that he would no longer be on Dr. Dre's Aftermath Records. Because of the issues with 50 Cent, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine had to look at which artists they wanted to side with. And ultimately, it was 50 because he was the one that was bringing in more of the sales. But they knew the game was a talented artist still. So they removed him off of G Unit Aftermath Interscope and instead, put him on the sister label, Geffen Records. And this hurt the game a lot, but this is ultimately what game wanted. He wanted to prove to everyone that he didn't need to be next to Dr. Dre or 50 Cent to deliver a great album. I didn't want Interscope to have nothing to do with my mm -hmm. album, so they put me on Geffen. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like when your mama check you out of school because the school's saying, you know, yo, yeah. you live up here acting crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to go to school down the street. And so that's what Jimmy Iovine did. He, he put took game by itself away from Interscope after Mavs G unit and left me on Geffen um, by myself. They, uh, they gave me a budget. I took that and I went to New York and I felt like I should be in the middle of everything that's f***ed up with me right now and I should record this album and that's what I did. With the game no longer being on Dr. Dre's aftermath, this hurt him a lot. That night he decided to vent in the studio, got really drunk and recorded the title track, A Doctor's Advocate. This track would be a resemblance of the start from scratch track on his first album, The Documentary. On the track, he is spilling out his guts to Dr. Dre, letting him know how he feels, why he's angry, why he's sad, every emotion that you can think of, he's letting Dre know about. And throughout the whole track, he's speaking to him like the father figure he never had. 
and the perfect person to get on this track with Game was Busta Rhymes. The Game said that when he joined Aftermath, Busta Rhymes was like a big brother to him, and anything that the Game needed, Busta Rhymes would always be there for him, being the new guy in the label. So it made sense for Busta Rhymes to be on this track because on the track, he is speaking like a big brother. He is speaking to Dr. Dre, saying that you should forgive him because he sometimes is random and will do whatever he wants regardless. The producer spoke on the night that they recorded the title track. The article says that night in the studio, the song's producer, Jonathan J.R. Rutem, was quick to realize this wasn't going to be business as usual in the recording booth. He said it was him having a direct conversation with Dr. Dre. A lot of rappers have a lot of fronts and may never do something that's this personal. It speaks volumes about game to see him do something so real and vulnerable and egoless on a track and make it the title track. Remember when we got drunk to do stuff from scratch? I told you you was like a father to me. I meant that. And as the weeks went on, Game took on more producers for the album, just as his first, such as DJ Khalil, Kanye West submitted a beat, Scott Storch submitted a few beats, Swizz Beats, High Tech, Mr. Porter, and much more. Ironically, the last track that was recorded for the album ended up serving as the first single off the album, and that was It's Okay, One Blood. The producer, Rifa, sent in the beat Game had no idea who he was and felt his beat CD was garbage, but that one beat was the one that did it for him and Game rapped on it. And then after that, the Game felt like he had a completed album. At this time, though, the Game had to prove himself to Jimmy Iovine and Geffen Records that he had something special here. So ultimately, what he ended up doing was in early July, leaked the first single, It's Okay, One Blood, and said that he handed it off to a bunch of DJs in New York. They played it. It started popping off. Then it started spreading to California. And before you know it, the Game had his first single. The Game then says he flew out to California, submitted his album, and with the momentum if it's okay one blood jimmy ivine and geffen records decided this was the perfect time to start pushing the single and the album in two months 60 days i recorded the doctor's advocate in total and brought it back and turned it in and as soon as jimmy ivine heard one blood he starts slobbing on the knob because <laughs> this knew that i could stand alone and right. we put one blood out and that erased everything that anybody was talking about any doubt any he needs dre he needs 50 mm -hmm. and all of that and however they had to make a public announcement that game was no longer with dr dre's aftermath or g unit so they did a press release where they announced the first single on july 24th 2006 would be one blood and would be off of game's second album doctor's advocate and this would all be released under interscope's sister label geffen records which had no association with dr dre's aftermath or 50 cents g unit records in the press release game made it clear that he didn't get kicked off the label he instead decided to leave and said if i wanted to work with dre 50 would have made money off my album. I can't let him do that. He said it was a decision that Game made in order to start building his own profile, and it made sense to him to stand on his own label-wise. Interscope Geffen a and Records, that parent company of both labels, said in a statement, so he made the switch to Geffen. And from there, the ball started rolling towards the Game's sophomore release album, Doctor's Advocate, and a lot of things were flying during this time. Mind you, nobody knew that the game scrapped those Dr. Dre tracks that he recorded in late 2005. This was not publicly noted at all. There were still rumors that Dr. Dre was going to be on the album because of the album's title. However, the game leaving Dr. Dre's aftermath still had people questioning whether Dre would make the album. And to put more pressure on himself, the game reiterated that his second album would end up selling 1 million copies the first week. And before the first official single, One Blood, was released to the masses, there was an alternate version that Game recorded that never made it out. And the alternate version featured more name drops of Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, and Eminem. In the version that the world hears, the Game says, I'm the king and Dre said it, the West Coast need me. 
and the alternate version that never came out, the game says, I'm the king, and Jay said it, the West Coast need me. So in these lines, the original version was mentioning Jay-Z, but the version that we all heard mentioned Dr. Dre. There was another line where a word got swapped out. In the version that we all know, the game says, everybody know that I'm the heir to the Aftermath dynasty. In the version that was the original version, he swaps out everybody for Dre and M know I'm the heir to the Aftermath dynasty. There is no official information as to why those words got swapped out, and there is actually no official release of that version mentioning Dre and M and J. Regardless, the version that we all know and love of One Blood got pushed to the masses on July 24th, 2006. The song ended up peaking at number 71 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 16 on the U.S. Hot Rap Songs. And this was a far cry from how the debut album documentaries singles performed. Those with 50 Cent, How We Do, Hate or Love It, peaked in the top five on the Billboard Hot 100. This one barely cracked the top 80. Despite that, the song was still performing at a very high rate because the record label initially titled One Blood as a street single and a music video was never supposed to be shot for it. But because the song was performing so well, they decided to name it the first official single on the album. Then in August of 2006, they revealed the official release date for Games Doctor's Advocate, which would be November 7th, 2006. Single is cracking right yes, now, sir. man. It's a single called It's Okay, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're from the hood, then you know it is one blood, man. This is how we do, man. The doctor's advocate in stores November 7th. I will not, cannot be stopped. I'm the gang, King of LA, face of LA, LA on my mother face. Yeah. Reflex, hold me down. Then on August 6, 2006, there were rumors floating around that the game had a track titled 100 Bars that was going to diss his own mentor, Dr. Dre. And those rumors got amplified when on August 10th, 2006, the game stopped by Power 106 to talk to DJ Ski and DJ Reflex about his upcoming album, The Doctor's Advocate. He confirmed the release date to be November 7th, talked about the producers on the album, such as Just Blaze, Scott Storch, and Kanye West, but did not mention Dr. Dre on the album and even said that he was shackle and chain free, which made it seem like him and Dr. Dre were not on good terms. <laughs> the girls, man, my space is doing their thing, man. I wish I wish me, Mondo, and Reflex would have came up with it. <laughs> you know, we'd be about here. one billion right now. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yes. All right, a little more de in depth with the album. Are you done with the album? Is it, is it complete? Yeah, the album defense? almost finished up, man. We about 99.999% done, yeah. man. Just going back in, cleaning up certain things and changing it because, you know, uh, time catches up with you. And, you know, things that I said, you know, a year ago on some tracks right. that made the final cut, I got to go back and um, revisit those and make them one. 100%, man, but this album is um, it's gonna be you know my best album to date. You know the documentary was a classic, man. Yeah. And this one is nothing short of you know better than that, man. Um, we gonna do the same thing, man. It's gonna it's gonna be the same look, man. You know what I'm saying? I got Just Blaze producing on the album, nice. Kanye back on the album, Ooh. Scott Storch back on the album, man. Uh, we we killing them on this one, man. Cool. We running, cool. man. You know what I'm saying? The tracks, my lyrical growth, everything, man. I'm running this, man. I'm the best rapper in the world, man. That's what I you know. But I try to come into this album a little bit more independent. I feel like I'm free, you know what I'm saying? I've been freed from, you know, no chains, all the all the ropes, you know, took off me, my back off the wall, and I'm just holding it down, man, and this album is for the game, man, and for my fans, that's it, just me and my fans, man, you know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody to ride my coattail, nobody to ride shotgun and my whip with me. This album is just for me and my fans, man, everybody else can suck my... Yeah. Ultimately, that 100 Bars track ended up being titled The Funeral, in which he was spitting over Lloyd Banks' Hands Up instrumental, going at 40 Glock, Hot Rod, Lloyd Banks himself, and everyone else over at G-Unit. Then the following month, in September of 2006, the label started gearing up to drop the game's second single, Let's Ride. Let's Ride was produced by Scott Storch and was released on September 24th, 2006. The song ended up peaking at number 46 on the Billboard Hot 100. And an interesting fact about this song was that Scott Storch charged the game $2 million 
for this beat. You have to remember at that time, Scott Storch was literally one of the hottest producers in the game. In the same month of September 2006, 50 Cent and Lloyd Banks graced the cover of XXL Magazine. And in 50 Cent's interview, he talks about the game's upcoming album, Doctor's Advocate. The interviewer says, let's talk about the game situation. 50 Cent says, game is on Geffen. He's not on G-Unit or on Aftermath anymore. It's all under Interscope still. He just has no participation from Dr. Dre or 50 Cent on his new project. The interviewer says, The whole game thing is an interesting situation. Everybody's waiting to see how it plays out with his album. 50 Cent then says, I don't think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be what it was before I wrote his hits. That's the bottom line. I wrote six records for his album. Three of them were his first three singles. Can he rap? Yeah. Is he a good songwriter? No. The interviewer then says, do you still make money off of that? He says, of course. You think I gave my money away? Me and Dre will still make the same money we would make off the project. It's just no longer on Aftermath or G-Unit. The interviewer asks, but if he's not on your label, how do you make money? 50 says, because Jimmy Iovine is the boss. Jimmy says this will stop the confusion because Dre isn't as vocal. The average person in the general public, they would think the differences between me and game are cool with Dre because they didn't hear Dre say anything. And then you look at it like games from the West. Then the interviewer says, does game know that Dre is not going to be on his album? I mean, the album's supposedly called The Doctor's Advocate. 50 says he front like The Doctor's Advocate because he tries to stay with Dr. Dre's association so he get the love on the West Coast. That's what he needs. I'll make more money off a game record every time it comes out than he will. It doesn't bother me if he sells records. I don't believe he will. My morals say every dollar ain't a good dollar. I'm sure we'll never be friends. In that same month of September 2006, the game also revealed that his album The Doctor's Advocate would get pushed back one week to November 14th. So of course the game had to go continuously promote the new release date by stopping by radio stations. And on September 29th, 2006, he stopped by Hot 97 to talk with Angie Martinez. And what was surprising about this interview was that he reached out to 50 Cent to see if they could squash the beef. And this would be the first time publicly he did that. He said, I want just to talk and just to see where our heads are and see if maybe we can come to an even playing field respectfully to each other. I want to see if we can figure it out as grown-ups. The game also confirmed in the interview that Dr. Dre is not on the album. He said, Dre is not on the album, no Dre involvement on this album. If you're looking to buy my album just because Dre did a beat or two, leave it on the shelf. The album is executive produced by the game. Dre took me from the hood and gave me an opportunity, so I'm always going to pay him that respect. Also, in September of 2006, the game did an interview with XXL Magazine. The magazine, however, did not come out until November of 2006. But in the interview, he talks about what he went through throughout the one year and a half after releasing his debut album, The Documentary. He said he felt suicidal, he was having issues with his family, and even in this interview, there were still questions on if Dr. Dre was going to appear on this album. The article starts out with the game saying, I got to a certain point in my life where I felt like I was about to commit suicide. The writer of the article said the game carried a lot on his shoulders, he's gone through a lot of changes, and dealt with more drama than anyone would want to. The game then said it wasn't so fun being me no more. All the chips were stacked up against me. My back was against the wall. I felt like I was alone. I felt like it was me against the world. The interviewer then asked the game's album title, The Doctor's Advocate. You have said in the past that you and Dre have a father-son relationship, a teacher-pupil relationship, but it seems like that the relationship has changed, at least as far as your working relationship. There's talk that Dre did not work on the new album and that you are no longer an aftermath, that you've been shipped over to Geffen. What's the status right now? The game says the status is that me and 50 have chose to part ways. And along those lines, there's a lot of things shaking up. Honestly, I'm going to keep it 100% real. I don't know who I'm signed to. I just know that Interscope and Geffen are both fighting over what label imprint is going to be on the back of the album. But the G-Unit label is not going to be on the back of the album. You might see the Aftermath logo on the back. You might see an Interscope on the back. You might not. You're definitely going to see Black Wall Street on the back, though. And on this album... I already been in the studio with Dre on this album. I got beats from Dre early, early. I work with Dre early on this album. The interviewer then says, so there are new Dre beats on there? Game says, yeah, stuff that Dre did that I had in the beginning of working on this album. 
can't nobody take that away from me, man. The interviewer then asks, when did you get the news that your label situation was changing and that there was a possibility that you might not be on Aftermath? The game says, when I started going against the grain and doing what Dre told me not to do, which was respond to 50. Once I did, I kind of felt like I betrayed Dr. Dre. But you know, it ain't no love loss. I had to do what I had to do to keep my career afloat. Now, do I regret what I did as far as beefing with G-Unit? No, because now I feel like I'm a free man and I can stand on my own. Dre executive produced on the last album, but on the Doctor's Advocate, you flip the album over, it's going to say executive produced by the game. So that means if it goes down as a classic, the motherfucker is going to have to give me my respect because I went in and wrote, penned, spit, and packaged another classic album without 50. The interviewer then asked, with Dre being the label CEO, the big brother in a sense, to both you and 50, why hasn't he been more vocal in the whole situation, at least publicly? We don't know what's being said behind the scenes, but from the outside, it seems like once everything popped off, Dre just sort of wiped his hands of everything. Game responds and says, I can't answer a question for Dre. I can only be responsible for myself. As far as Dre, I couldn't do anything but respect him. Dre signed me, gave me an opportunity to make millions of dollars, which I have. All I can do is be thankful towards Dre. At the same time, you can't take that personal because this is business. Is it Dre's responsibility to get in between two men when you know it's a real hip-hop war? I almost felt like the Biggie and Pac shit was about to come back full circle. Dre reached out to me on numerous occasions, and I'm pretty sure he did the same to 50. I got a few phone calls from Dre about stopping the beef and talking to 50, but I'm hard-headed. I do me, I do what I want to do. Now, I didn't hear the conversations he had with 50, but I'm pretty sure they were the same. Dre wanted it to end. Interscope Chief Jimmy Iovine wanted it to end. But when you look at the aftermath of the shit, you can pretty much figure out what happened. I didn't listen to Dre, and neither did 50. We're both grown men. We're going to make our own decisions. The best decision we think suits us. We made a decision to go to war, and we're at a stage now where it's dead. Nothing else can be gained on either part. The interviewer then asked, when was the last time Game spoke to Dr. Dre? The Game said, I talked to Dre maybe about three or four months ago. I went into the studio when he was finishing the Busta record and played him some of my joints. He went nuts. He talked about coming in at the end of the recording process and working on more joints with me. Dre always told me, and you can quote me on this, fuck what people say in the streets, fuck what they say in behind closed doors. Me and him are always going to be the same way that we left each other. So if we left each other and we was mad at each other and we hated each other, then that's what it is. But if we left each other and we gave each other a pound and a pat on the back and hugs and said, all right, my guy, that's what it is until the next time we see each other. That's something that he told me that touched me, man. He told me, don't believe none of the hoopla, none of the bullshit. Game and Dre is always the same as the last time that Game and Dre seen each other. And that, I felt like, was 100. The interviewer then said, it's been so crazy for you since your last album came out. How did you keep your focus to record this new one? Game said, it's been crazy. That's why I felt real compelled when you up in the head you write the best songs you write some of your best songs when you're hurt man and i was down that's one thing that i can say i was at a point between the first album and this album i was at a point where i kind of felt like i wanted to kill myself the interviewer then said are you serious homie really game said dead serious man and the only thing that saved me was my little boy because you know other than that i didn't have nothing to live for i don't even care what happens to me but my kid man that's my son that's my twin I love that dude so much, man. Then finally, the long-awaited month of November 2006 came. The month where Game can prove that he could do something major without the help of Dr. Dre or 50 Cent. And on November 7th, 2006, he delivered a major remix that hasn't been seen in hip-hop since, which was the official One Blood remix featuring an array of artists. To be exact, it featured 23 artists on the song from Jim Jones, Snoop Dogg, Nas, T.I., Fat Joe, Lil Wayne, Nori, Jadakiss, Styles P, Fabulous, Rick Ross, Twista, Chameleonaire, Slim Thug, Young Dro, and even Ja Rule. In the January 2007 Vibe magazine cover, the game revealed that he actually reached out to 50 Cent to appear on the One Blood remix. In the interview, he said, I reached out to 50 to see if he was going to be part of the remix. Chris Lighty, his manager, thought I was joking because 50, that's my arch nemesis. He ended up saying no, which I expected, but I'm such a funny guy, I thought I'd do it anyway, just to say I did. Then a week later, on November 14th, 2006, the game officially releases his second album, 
doctor's advocate. Then one week later, on November 21st, 2006, the official numbers for the game's second album are in. The album debuts at number one and sells nearly 360,000 copies its first week. Although this was a far cry from the game's hopes of doing 1 million copies the first week, and it did undersell what the game's debut album, the documentary, did, it still was a huge success because it debuted at number one. Plus, the album was generally received well from critics. The album got a four and a half mics out of the Source magazine, an 8.1 out of 10 out of Pitchfork Media, 3 out of 5 stars from Rolling Stone, 3 out of 4 stars from USA Today, a B from Entertainment Weekly, and a favorable review from the New York Times. The concept for the doctor's advocate is payback. For all the that didn't think I could do it, for all the that said that I, that I wasn't going to be able to do it without Dr. Dre, for all the that said 50 killed my career, for all the just hate me individual I hate you too and you know and this is it this is this is this is for all the this is it right here for all the that don't know how to swallow pills when the doctor's advocate drops it's medicine and you're gonna take it if I gotta force feed it to you if I gotta put the spoon in your mouth shove the pill down your throat that's what this album is to me to the world to hip-hop to my fans one of the critically acclaimed tracks on the album is track number 10, titled One Night. On the track, the game vividly explains the frustrations he's had over the past 12 months in his life. And it's mainly come from the friends and family that grew up around him before the major success in his life. And of course, with success comes a lot of people who change around you, not seeing you no longer as a human being, but more like an ATM machine. And throughout the track, he voices his frustration about his friends not understanding and appreciating everything that the game has done for them. And in verse two, he highlights the moment he saw bullet holes in his son's car seat. And what he's referring to in these bars is the day the documentary dropped, he was getting ready to go to the release party. At the time, he still lived in Compton. And when he came out the house, People saw him and started shooting. The game ducked. And fortunately for him, he did not get hit by any bullets. And in the verse, he voices his frustration on how his friends handled the situation. Not even asking, is he okay? They just said, keep it real. Ultimately, in verse 3, he says, I should have took Dr. Dre's advice. Couldn't be a real homeboy to save your life. I should have took Dr. Dre's advice. And these are things that the game struggles with throughout the album, whether he should have respected Dr. Dre's decisions and a lot of the things that he asked him about. And the way the game explains the album title perfectly explains what the game was referring to when it comes to this whole album. The game also had a fallout with his own brother, Big Face, who accused him of not looking out for him after he became successful. So not only falling out with your friends, but also family. Fast forward to December 2006, and because of the huge success of the game's album, 50 Cent decided to troll and actually wore the game's t-shirt of Doctor's Advocate in Los Angeles. And he did this in response to the game succeeding because 50 Cent has always stated he doesn't care if the game sells a lot of albums because he makes 25% of whatever the game sells off his albums. Fast forward to January 2007, and the songs that the game and Dr. Dre worked on in late 2005 actually end up leaking on the internet. And these leaks consist of six tracks all produced by Dr. Dre. These tracks were meant for the album initially, but ultimately the game felt like he wanted to do the album by himself without Dre and without 50, so they never made the final cut. And that's it for this video of the making of the game's Doctor's Advocate. Mind you, everything that game was going through at this time, he was only 26 years old. So to be able to prevail throughout all that doubt with your back against the wall and you against the world is something that isn't done by many artists. He prevailed through all that and didn't fold despite everything being against him. He made it happen, delivered a number one album, and as of the recording of this video, the game says the album has sold over 2 million copies worldwide. And this album is widely regarded as the game's best body of work 
by a lot of fans. That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. For just $3 a month, you can get my videos uncut and raw the way I intended them to be, but couldn't because of YouTube. Plus, you also get access to our Discord community, where we have a great community talking about hip hop and various other things. It's very dope. So only $3 a month, I'd really appreciate the support. Also follow us on social media at QuakeGW and at Diverse Mentality. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.